All right. Welcome back uh, to the show show, everybody. The show about the show. How are we doing Hola, today? Como, como estas? Bien. Bien, y, y tu? Who are you? Who am I? Who is the, who is on the listening to this? I, I, that's a good question. I don't know. You know, I was looking at uh, demographics. For some reason, we seem to only be, uh, most of our demographic, which it doesn't like, you know, doesn't show everything with a smaller amount of views, but uh, it only gives us age so far. Everything else is kind of just unknown. I think it's like mostly U.S., of course, but uh, uh, it's 25 to 30-something-year-olds. Yeah, I mean that's what that's what we are, right? I guess you're not 25 yet. No, I I I feel like you know why why don't we have like you know a mix of like more ranges, you know, uh, like uh, and it's a small amount of views, so of course it's not gonna like you know it doesn't show everyone. If there's like one person who's like younger, it's like not gonna show that. But still, it's I don't know. Can you make sure that your microphone's not peaking? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um. Test, test, test. Okay, let me turn myself down a little bit just in case. Test, test, test. Yeah, that it says it's good in um. It says it's good in uh OBS, which usually it it seems to work out okay when I export it into uh Premiere. It's sounding better now. Okay, that's good. That's good. What about you? Let me let me make sure you're like turned up enough. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, okay. Can I see what the... Are we still... We don't have a different background? No. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> we don't have a different background. It's still the same. It's the, uh, the Nick Cage uh, It'd background. It's pretty easy to just Photoshop a bigger rectangle inside of that. Yeah, it, it would be. It would be. I, I, I need to get on changing it. Like, I'm thinking, too, that, like, maybe we just, you know, the Nick Cage thing after a while, it, it's just going to get old. We got to we gotta find a, a good background. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe we, we swap that out with something a little bit more uh, long-lasting, you know? There we go. Okay. Let's see how that looks. All right, nice, nice. So this is uh this is the song uh I titled it Christmas Soup um because I didn't really know what else to title it it like uh it was sent to me as like Christmas song uh and then when I put the files and I had to choose a name and I was just like ah oh, Christmas Soup um so that's what it's called um and it has a two because I I did make some modifications um and also I've I've been mixing with um it's pretty bad but I, I've been mixing with just one headphone still. Uh, because I, I haven't gotten this repaired yet, this set. Um, oh, I, yeah. I had a, you know, crazy enough, you know how we were talking about how everything was breaking? Yeah. I didn't even mention the fact that before I started just using these headphones, only these, my, like, casual headphones that I'd use for, like, non-mixing purposes, those broke. Damn. It just the whole entire just thing just, like, just just came off the side. I was like, what is happening here? But, yeah, uh... It it does it does but it, it it's okay I've managed to like I can still hear which is good, um. Just if we uh if we panned anything I I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be able to tell but this is the main modification that I made I just was messing around with this like little uh little jazz little guitar thing, um. But uh here I'll uh we can play it from the beginning we'll give you guys a, a full listen. Uh, for the viewers at home, since they don't know what this is. And Jimmy Butler said... Oh, can you start it over, please? Jimmy Butler came to your house and he said... Someone gonna go sky, someone gonna go sky, I'll get a bushka, I'll get a bushka. 
Só uma grande cosca. Uma grande babushka. Uma grande babushka. Why do you see the world through black and white? Is it any brisket? Can I get a witness? He's not Mario and Luigi. They want to make me a sweet gem. I want to block all the water in your shower. And you, you don't know. Hour after hour, power after power, loading up the dock. I'm shipping you tomorrow. I got a reason to know. I got a reason to know. You're not even a liquid, not even glow. pretty much it so to show you here like uh listening back to it now i don't know how i feel about it it's kind of like uh 
let me uh, let me zoom in here a little bit so we uh, we can see what we're looking at. But uh, it's basically this little jazz guitar. And uh, I'm not quite sure if I like it. I, I tried to time it up with like the uh, the little uh, what do you call that? The uh, the kind of uh, not distortion, but uh, when it kind of like skips a little bit the uh, the backtrack. Yeah. You yeah. Time it up with that. I did. Yeah. Yeah. So if you like, uh, you can kind of tell. You can barely hear it here. Uh, but if I uh, maybe I can like solo it. To get a better, uh, give you a better idea of what it what it really sounds like. Um, let's see, what insert is it actually? Um, okay, it's definitely this one. Yeah, twenty five. Okay. Solo that one, and also solo the backtrack. <laughs> That sounds good. Okay, okay. With the lyrics, it kind of starts to like, uh, like muffle a little bit. Oddly enough, I, I don't know how to describe it. Like, with the uh, with the actual uh, vocals in there, I I don't know. Like, I'm not sure how to feel about it. I'll, I'll give you a, a listen with that. Got a wires man. I'm a wired man. I'm a wired man. I'm a wired man. I mean, it, it doesn't look like it's panned. You could pan it further out, and you can also put an EQ on it. I could, I could. The only problem is, I again, I, I only have the one um the one headphone, so I I can't hear um I, what what I could do is I could pan it into this headphone, but I feel like I. I wouldn't know uh, what it sounds like. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna have to go basically off of um, off of your your discretion here. Yeah, I mean, you can't even you can't even do anything really if you don't know what it sounds like. Yeah, th that is true. I, I'm basically, I mean, everything right now uh, that was sent to me it was all like uh, in stereo, so I figured I'd be somewhat okay. Um, but I, I I don't know. I don't know. I can show you the, uh, I found some, like, uh, some interesting, like, samples. Um, it, it's been a while, uh, by the way, for anyone at home, like, it's been a while since I've used this. I'm, I'm usually a, a Pro Tools person. Pro Tools wasn't working on, uh, on my computer, so I had to, uh, go back to FL Studios, which I haven't used in, uh, in a few years. So, uh, I, I was exploring some, like, stuff that, like, uh, I just, I just never looked into. Um, but here, I'll, I'll, I'll show you something. I, I, I thought this sounded kind of interesting. Um, like, uh, should I start it? Like, may maybe like right here, see how this sounds. So it, it like uh the uh th this little thing on the side here I, I guess it's like some voice recording that uh that they it's like the bass pack that they give you with FL Studios, um but uh but yeah the the C the A and C and D seem to sound pretty good underneath. I don't know what what, what do you think? I I liked. I liked when it did it, but I didn't. Whatever just played, I liked the first four sounds that it make, and then I didn't like the whatever played after that. Okay, okay, yeah. The the first one was uh, was this. I think it was the. Yeah, I like that, and you should just drag that in and play it twice. Okay, okay, and so far I've been using uh, what was sent to me. It, it has a. Uh... A few blank tracks so all these don't have anything on it so I've just been dragging them into there and then I figure that it'll line up with the song anyways because uh, 
Kristoff has all the uh, all the base files anyways, so even if there's anything missing, luckily uh, it should be easy to just drag in the stuff. So you're not gonna you're not gonna drag that in, or you are? Uh yeah yeah I'll I'll, I'll drag it in I'll drag it in. Uh let's see let me just create a new new sample here. I feel like that's uh, I hope it doesn't do that every single time. That's just gonna get that's just gonna get annoying. <laughs> okay let's see here. Uh, let me just make room. And uh, again, everyone, take. Uh, why is it scrolling? Why is it auto scrolling? What? Stop it. Stop it. Okay, that's just gonna get annoying. I don't even know what I did. What? What did I do? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> God damn it! Okay. This is uh, this is ridiculous, dude. This is ridiculous. Okay. It's got it's got to stop this. This is okay. What what did I press? What did I press? This has got to This is just. I don't even know how this happens. Okay, real quick. No. What is going on here? Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna work. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, let's see. For, you know what, since this doesn't have anything on it, I'm just going to clear out this whole thing here. Okay, now we got a full track to work with here. Um, okay, that's really way too high. Oh my god. Okay, that sounds, that sounds pretty normal. Um, let's see. I, I wish I had my MIDI keyboard set up. Um, again, it's been a while since I used this. Let's see. Okay, that doesn't sound good. Again, using this is going to be like, uh, I got lords in the like a Jimmy Jones and the Jones and the That doesn't sound good either though. That doesn't sound in beat. Do you happen to remember what the BPM was for this when we recorded it in uh in Ableton? No, he didn't send that? No, no. Yeah, then there's no hope, dude. Okay, yeah. No, I, I I've just been messing around guessing. Uh, the the beat pretty much like with these I I just like hope that they lined up I I kind of just I I ended up messing around with it uh, but yeah no there there probably isn't much hope but uh anyways that's that's our song at least at least you guys can uh, can see that and uh, in the future maybe uh, we uh, we can mix some stuff you know yeah yeah you should ask for the BPM. I should, I should, yeah, yeah. But at least it's it's a sneak peek of what could be, you know? Like, we got a, a mixing, mastering podcast kind of thing possibly later, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll see what the quality sounds like. I think there's a couple tracks that are doubled up in the, in the uh, project, and I think that's, like, the vocals are doubled up. Yeah. Like you, you should turn those off. Okay, I didn't know if that was purposeful or not because like um no, so just turn off the one that has all of them. So track 9, turn that off. Uh track 9, okay. Yeah. And then play it play like a section that has vocals. Okay. I can go back to uh not even a liquid, not even close, not even a solid. It's something more. It's kind of like a bougie. Kind of a bougie. And it is over for me. Okay. Okay. That sounds, it sounds way cleaner. Yeah, that does. I I, I thought that was like a, a special effect, like a, a track or something like that. Okay, that that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So that's just the baseline stuff then. Okay. 
So, uh, anyways, that's uh, back to the regular podcast. Then we're uh, we're, we're back. You uh, you had a hey, hey guys. You had a, uh, a a dentist appointment, right? Right, right. How did that go? I uh, I uh, went there, and they uh, I'm done with my appliance, my pivot appliance. Ah, congrats! You're done with the um, you called it um, it was like you had a a grill, right? Yeah, I'm done with the grill, but they basically just replaced like the bumpy part with um you know like if you get a filling they fill it in with com- it's called composite yeah yeah they basically built up my my uh second to last molar up to uh simulate like i have that appliance in but i don't anymore ah well dang i i guess like uh, you can i can't even tell that you have it in anymore well, I don't have I don't have the appliance in anymore. Did you not hear what I said? I I thought they just modified it. You said that they like filled in the. Uh... Are you saying they ju- they just did that like to uh it wasn't to the uh the actual like, um guard specifically. It was they they did that uh on your teeth, so you just have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Ah, I I thought they did it to the uh, to the mouth guard. Okay. Is that like a, nope. a permanent thing, or like that just like is gonna keep uh, keep everything like in place, kind of, right? Yeah. So the mouth guard was breaking, and then next in while well, it was supposed to be next week, I don't know if it's gonna happen now because somebody in the office forgot to order the expander. But when I got the expander, I w- they were gonna do this anyway. So when the retainer was breaking, then they just did this ahead of time. Um. But yeah, ne- next week or the week after that, I'm getting an expander for the front for the front teeth to get pushed forward. Um, and it'd just be too much to have in my mouth all at once to have the the bottom retainer and uh, it's like a metal. If I share the screen, will you be able to see it? I think so. I don't think I think it will mess up the OBS thing a little bit. I I, I don't know. Let's see. I mean, I could text it to you, and you can sh- you can play it. Actually, let me see here. If I stop sharing, stop streaming, and then you do, it's gonna look a little bit messed up in OBS for a little bit. But I think it should theoretically show the same format. I think. Yeah, that worked. That actually did work. Okay. Okay. Let me so, uh, let me switch us over. Getting, I'm getting something put in. There we go. That. Wait, hold hold up a second. Uh, that does not look right at all. That uh. The uh the share screen thing. Let's see if I can just make that look a little bit better. No, that doesn't it's work. It's gonna be. It's just gonna be for a second, dude. Okay. Okay. We'll leave it like this. Can you, we'll like can you see the photo or not? Uh, yeah, I can. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to find a good example. Um, it the appliance isn't gonna look. Uh, the expander isn't gonna look that much like this. But basically, you can see here's like somebody's teeth, right? And there's there's no gap right here between the canine tooth and the first premolar. Yeah, yeah. You see that in the in the before, in the after, now there's a gap there. Yeah, I see that. So this metal device, the whole reason of having it is to push forward those front one, two, three, four, five, six teeth. Yeah, I see right? that. So it'll it'll press them forward, and then over time with braces. Um, uh, most likely they'll pull each tooth up one at a time. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. If not, they'll just add, they'll add to this tooth and to this tooth to just fill in the gap. 
Okay, I see. Yeah, that that reminds me of the uh, when I uh, when I used to um, have braces at the orthodontist. What uh, what they did is they had this like device that instead of like pushing teeth forward, it pushed like all the teeth out. So it was supposed to like open up your jaw. Um, I don't know if anyone in the audience uh, knows what I'm talking about here, but you'd have. I mean, to I had I had one it. of those. You had one of those too, okay? Yeah, because you'd have to um, you'd have to tighten it with like a little like wrench thing, and then it would it would slowly apply more pressure. Yeah, I'll I'll be doing that too. Um, it's just going in a different direction. Okay. Yeah, this is the this is the new orthodontics. Um, you know to uh. Open up space for your airway, um, and to improve improve the condition of your jaw joint, not only to line up your teeth, but you know, depending on where your jaw is, you're gonna have, um, you know, airway issues, and it will also affect um, the condition of your your neck, the vertebrae in your neck, um, which will affect your overall posture. Um, so it's, it's, uh, you know, it's the new, it's the new science on orthodontics and a lot of people kind of fucked, fucked it up. A lot of orthodontists just had limited information in the past. Damn. No, I, I, I remember I, I did not like that, uh, that expanding tool that, that thing sucked. I, I remember like uh, I, I hated it because you'd feel like the pressure and and it whenever it like got better, that's when you were supposed to like apply more pressure. And so it's right. just like over time you were just like, oh no. Yep. Well, you probably had a narrow mouth and it probably helped you out a lot. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I, I'd rather have it than not have it, but uh I, I do remember that. I remember just liking it. Yeah, so it's interesting. There's each orthodontic treatment has a, it's a different payment. So you pay for like first, like for the expansion, and then you see what actually happens because they don't actually know what's going to happen, how far it needs to go, and where your jaw is actually going to move to. It's not like um, it's not a perfect science because you know. There's so much, there's so many different muscles that go, are involved in like your bite. Um, and you never, and it's really hard to tell in advance how everything's going to line up um, when things start moving. So you just pay for one thing at a time. And so this first stage, I got an estimate two weeks ago for how much it was going to cost. And then I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, the people in the office thought it was going to be way cheaper than my initial estimate. Ah. And so now I'm, now I'm set to pay like a thousand dollars less than I thought I was going to pay. Um, Man. but I don't know if they're just, uh, ignorant or like they're making like a mistake. Um, if they're just trying to help me out, like I don't, I can't really tell if, they're just making a mistake and I should step in and say, they told me it was going to, it was going to cause this much. This is how much I'm going to pay. Or I just take, Hey, you guys are like doing me a solid, like just, I'm, you're going to give me a thousand dollars off this thing. Um, yeah, that's, that's a hard one. I, I would say that like, uh, I it, like, you know, healthcare and even like, you know, dental is like, it's already so expensive. It's like, you know, you like you taking the break where you can get it, but at the same time, I guess like your worry is that someone could be like uh, held responsible for it, like the person in the office who messed up. Someone would be like, "Hey, I don't know. If I'm, I'm just, I just don't know." I will tell you that like I've had a lot of problems with the people in the office. Um, so like that's going going into this, and then also like somebody in the office forgot to order my expander, right? So like the quality of care is worse than I expected when I agreed to the original amount. And so also that's going into this. I mean, 
I I wouldn't ask I any questions. How. I I just I'd take the a thousand dollars off. You know, like already dental is so expensive. It's like you know when you but get a break, somebody, it's. But I like this dentist, and they you know that's their that's that's what they went to school for. She's a she's a dent she's a natural dentist, which is the same as she's a regular dentist, right? But she's also a naturopath. So she went she went to school for like. 11 years or something right and she didn't get paid during that and so like this is her business at the same time so there's there's no like uh oh it's just me versus uh a large payment like this is somebody else's life too that's true yeah and it, it would be different if like uh again it's really the the insurance companies too that uh i don't have, mess I don't things have insurance. Up. you don't have insurance okay so you're paying out of pocket you're paying out of pocket uh yeah, that that's a that's a hard one. Like, uh, you could mention something. They might even just tell you that no, it actually is cheaper. You know, um, but whoever I would say it like the the dentist doesn't like go over. Whenever you ask a dentist about the payment plan, like they're not gonna talk to you about it. They always like they don't want to be a part of the money transaction. They just want to be doing the work. So if I were to ask sense. anybody, it would be the people in the office. Who did that already I mean there's like one other woman in the office that wasn't there today and I think she knows the most but I don't know dude yeah that that that, that is a tough one that definitely is um I'm just sitting I'm just sitting on it for now maybe they'll catch later and I'll be fine happy to pay the extra amount so yeah and I, I don't think like even if like that's the amount that you pay that's what they told you they're not gonna like blame you and be like you like because you didn't know you know like you were just told the amount to pay and you you pay it you know like uh you know yeah, i mean it's not a, it's not about me getting and me being liable for anything it's just like all right you know there's all sorts of gray areas in a lot of situations um that nobody prepares you for so that's the case. I'm just going to, I just say, okay, maybe I just don't have the right information. And if it comes up later, I won't be like, um, disappointed or anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'd say all you can do in that situation is, you know, uh, pay, pay what they, they say that you owe. And, uh, <laughs> and then if it later on, they're like, oh, we met, we messed up. Then, then you'd just be willing to like, you know, yeah, make, make the correction, uh, yeah. yeah, but I mean, I signed I signed the contract today saying I'm going to pay this amount for this treatment and these are the monthly payments for it. So like now, uh, even if they try to tell me it costs more later, it's like I signed this contract, you know? Yeah, yeah. I no, even had is... them, like like the woman even wrote the wrong the original amount on the contract in one of the lines. And then, like, they were like, oh, wait, no, it's less. So they even had to go in and cross it. Because if there's medical records anywhere and you make an amendment, you just draw a single line through it so people know what you crossed out. And then you have to do an initial next to, like, where your amendment is, right? So in the record, it shows that it was previously a higher amount. And this woman in the office has made an amendment to it, and she initialed it. And so... That's the contract that I signed. It, it says lower. So I don't know how they would be able to say, oh, no, now it costs more, you know? I don't, they probably couldn't. I, I don't think they'd even probably tell you about it, even if they've, even if there was, they found out that, like, oh, we made a little mistake. They probably, I, they'd probably just be like, okay, like, no, I, they, they make wouldn't a mistake. Be to... If they make a mistake and then there's the, the dental office is supposed to have, a thousand more dollars for this i think that they have no choice it's not like i think they would have to ask me for it and then i'd be like yo you told me 2800 and i signed the contract yeah 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 uh, I, I, I i i don't know if they like but they'd know too they'd be like well the contract we already had him sign the contract we can't like you know send a a thousand dollar amendment to his doorstep you know it would probably be one of those things where I, I I don't know. That's that is a really strange situation. 
They might be correct though. They might honestly just be <laughs> they might honestly be correct. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I'd have I'd have to have uh I'd have to have the woman that knows the most about the office be there. Unless unless she finds out about it some way, it won't be a problem. Yeah, no, no. I I and I, I can't imagine that like, you know, that's like a super common if she like if she crossed out the original amount it feels like that's like something that like is very purposeful you know like when you see the original amount that if that was the correct amount crossing it out you'd have to like have like some like there'd have to be some reason coming from that you know yeah well i mean so there was the original amount and then all of a sudden in their online records it says all right all of a sudden now it's 2800 now that was for the original amount but i did do a thousand dollar down payment to when i thought it was 3800 so it would make uh. sense that now the balance would be at 2800 which is what they saw but then what they did is they then they went back and they said okay you already paid a thousand dollars and the balance is at 2800 now what you owe is 1800 that makes sense okay yeah you know, actually, that that sounds right to me. That sounds completely right. You did the down payment, right? And then uh, that goes a part of the whole entire fee, you know? No, it goes a part of the whole entire fee. But if I paid $1,000 towards the 3800 the remaining balance would be 2800 right? Yeah. So now they're looking up and looking at the balance, and it's at 2800 And then they're saying to me, oh, Jake, you already paid $1,000. Now it's at 1800 when it started at 3 3800 which is $2000 when i only paid $1000 ah uh, does it say it's 1800 now did it uh did I mean, it that's go what through the, that's what the contract says is that the remaining balance is 1800 and i have to pay that $300 a month for 6 months ah okay yeah that does sound kind of weird. That sounds very strange. It sounds like a thousand dollars did just kind of d roll off the the contract there, but but it might have been an est. It just might have been the thirty eight hundred might have been an estimate, and then they did something different once they actually ordered the the unit. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'd say I wouldn't question it. Like I'd say as like the as the person who's like you know just the uh, the customer there. I I'd say you know uh, all you can do is pay what they tell you 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 owe you know and uh, yeah. yeah yeah but it's but I mean the the whole the whole payment situation has been messed up there anyway because I so so usually somebody comes in they have a consultation and there's a price for the consultation right and then if you move to the next stage then there's an appliance that they develop for you right. And so then every time you come in, you, you purchase the appliance, which is about 1100 or $1,500. Right. And then eat. And so the dentist makes money for making the appliance. Right. And then, you know, every few weeks, depending on how much you wear it, you'll come in and there'll be another, there'll be another, uh, amount that you spend for them to adjust the appliance. Right. Cause your mouth is moving. They need to, to grind some off or add some to make it work. Okay, so that's the that's the regular um, thing that happens when you enter this dental office. But what happened for me was, as I told you, I think two two times ago, the episode that just came out a few days ago, I already had the night guard from a different dentist, right? So she didn't she didn't make any money off of creating the appliance for me. She just added on to it, and that was no charge. It was the same charge at, as adjusting my appliance. Okay? You follow so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so she didn't make money off of that, but most people wearing the appliance, they're only coming in three every two or three or four weeks. So every time you come in to get the appliance adjusted, you would pay – two hundred and forty dollars but you're coming in every two three or four weeks so it's somewhere between 
fifty dollars a week, you know, sixty dollars a week up till one hundred and twenty dollars a week, right? But I literally wore my appliance every single second. Okay, most people wear it like half the time or only at night. I was wearing it. I haven't eaten a meal since the middle of November without my appliance in. Most people don't eat with the appliance in at all. Okay, um, they call me su- they call me super compliant. Okay. <laughs> so what was happening was my my bite was moving my jaw was moving and my bite was adjusting so much because i was using the appliance so much that i had to go in every week and pay the 240 dollars ah okay okay so then i was like hey like um i'm kind of concerned that like because she she never knows how far the jaw is gonna move forward right of what's natural so she couldn't tell me like a specific time to uh, like a dead a deadline like oh you're gonna pay two forty two hundred forty dollars a week for you know five more weeks she couldn't give me an end date and so I was kind of concerned about that so like and she knows I'm a student so she tried to she tried to help me out and she's like oh since you're coming in every week at the end of maybe my third or fourth adjustment she was like no charge for today. Okay. Okay. So that's nice. I mean, she wasn't doing that much. All she was, was you bite down a few times on this paper that marks up the appliance and then you grind down some of the marked up parts. So that's like a smaller surface area contacting the upper teeth. Okay. Yeah. If I had the tools, I could do a pretty good job of doing it just at my house. So it definitely wasn't worth $240 coming in every week. Yeah. Yeah. I I, okay. I I can imagine. Okay, so she's so she's doing me a solid. She's like, all right, not no two forty this week. I come in the next week, and then again, since I now I'm signing up for the longer term plan, not then I don't pay two hundred forty that week. So I got it adjusted twice for zero dollars. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. So already the already the payment thing is like there's a disconnect between her and the office because every time I would come out after getting my adjustment, I would tell them what she said. And so a couple of times she said no charge. And then the people were like, but wait, you I thought th- at first they didn't even know how much the adjustment cost. And it took a really long time for it to, for them to figure out that it was two hundred forty two dollars. And then once I once I checked out with one of the um, office ladies, the next time I had a different office lady, and she was confused and she went through the same thing. So, um, <laughs> when it comes down to it, I, I'm just confused about how who how, who decides what costs what, you know. That is a good question. Yeah, I I don't know how that works at like uh, even like a doctor's office. I I don't know. I, I guess like with a. Uh... If it's a smaller run business, then there's there's less that's running up the chain, right? Like if you go to like uh, I think if I, I I go to Virginia Mason, that's like my uh, my doctor's office, and it's like a big company, so I'm sure they have like you know the big wigs, like the the people on the board, you know, and all that stuff is running that way. But if you have like a small clinic um, that's run by like just the doctor or the dentist that's like running that clinic it probably is more dynamic where it's just a feedback between the office people and whoever owns the clinic i would assume yeah but i no no that's i'm i mean i'm i'm sure that's happening but it's just like when i'm going when i'm going in there and now all of a sudden it's like $1000 less and i and i never had like a consistent like uh understanding of like there there is so most places that I've gone, if it's a doctor or a dentist, there is a, this is a set cost for this treatment. Yeah. Right. So it just has, I just haven't, uh, that hasn't been present here. And so that's adding to the confusion now that the cost of this treatment has now, uh, been reduced by, uh, a third basically. So. Yeah, that that is that is interesting. <laughs> What's funny is it makes me think like, like walking out like and being like, oh, 
they they said this um they said this like this this um this time is free i imagine like somebody like trying that like from the office people's perspective like are you are you sure that are you sure <laughs> they said that yeah. yeah no they did it they did it at first they were like no i gotta check in with her yeah and then yeah and then one of the times i got my mine adjusted so because one time one time i went and i didn't pay it was no charge right and then the next time there was a charge but the woman in the office didn't hear that and so so she was like, oh, Jake, you're free to go. And then I was like, no, today there's a, ch I have to, I'm being charged. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so she was like, oh, like Jake, good job for being honest. You know, you, I said you could go, but like, you knew that you had to pay. Right. And I was like, yeah, like, I mean, she told me I had to pay. So they do trust that I'm going to pay when I have to pay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, because I, I just imagine that, like, you know, yeah, it, it it already is a weird system that she'd send you out to tell them that it's free when they would probably question it and be like, is it, are you sure? And they'd have to go ask her anyway. She'd have to tell them directly for them to understand. Or otherwise, they'd have to take your word, uh, your word for it. Yeah. But I, I just but imagine, I like, I... I like if I went to like the doc my doctor's office, I just imagine if I, if I just like if they were like, in sh <laughs> do you have like I walk into the front desk and just being like it's free and just walking to like. The <laughs> 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 <sighs> yeah, that would be good. I wonder, like, do they have like. What is their protocol for that? Like, if someone goes in and, uh, and like, doesn't have insurance on file, or they've asked me for, like, insurance, too, but, like, if, if they, like, asked you for insurance or asked you, like, you know, oh, it's time to pay and check out, and you somebody just kept walking. They couldn't, do, they couldn't do anything. What's their protocol for it, though? Like, do, I wonder if they have, like, I don't know, I just imagine that, like, there's some, like, Somebody who like comes charging out from the back and just no, <laughs> like, they, they just lose the money. That's just how it works. I I don't know that I feel like there's like I guess they have your name on file, so it's just like it's already a debt, you know, like um, like anything that the insurance doesn't cover. I noticed that um at Virginia Virginia Mason they have like an e profile and you're supposed to like pay it online. So I guess either way they'd get you. Because they'd they'd probably just be like, oh, it's just debt, and they just send a debt collector after you. I I suppose after yeah. a while, they probably would. If you would, yeah, if you would give them the, your information already, they would definitely come after you. Yeah, um, yeah, they they do have my information on file. I'm assuming that's the way it is with most people. I I, I bet you they don't let people in unless they take down your information. So I guess you, I guess you couldn't really get away. With just, I guess you couldn't just go. It's free. They'd probably just be like, "We'll see." You. <laughs> yeah. be like, we'll Most see. people, I don't know if they would know, but um, did you ever go to a, like one of your friends' comedy uh, stand up? Like, did they go to any open mics that you went to? Um, let's see. I uh, I went to a few. I went to a few. He actually graduated um this last quarter. Uh, the guy who was doing stand up. Um, and I, I went to a few of his shows. Yeah. I went to a few of his, uh, his open night, open mics, open mics. Did people laugh? Um, sometimes, sometimes no. <laughs> At his comedy or just, did you watch anybody else go up? Yeah. Yeah. Th there was a lot of people that went up. Um, he had some good sets. I, I think sometimes he, he would say that he wasn't the happiest with his set either, but I, I think like uh that that's kinda like what you're you're testing out um you're testing out, you know, uh, bits and uh and acts. So you kinda have to, you know, uh see what the audience thinks. That's kind of a testing period. So not all of them can be uh slam dunks, you know. Yeah, you ever thought about doing it? Uh I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's quite my uh quite my style. Like I, I feel like I uh I, I like um 
if anything, I, I'd rather like put time into like making even like YouTube videos or something like that. I feel like that's more of uh, or writing like scripts and things like that. I feel like that's more my my pace than than stand up. But uh, I, I've I thought think, about it. I think you'd be good at it. Oh right, well, thanks, thanks. I might uh, I might I might try uh, an open mic maybe sometime. But there's there's one down here that's in Everett that. I mean, there's tons, but there's one that's not that far away from here. I've gone a couple times. Have you uh, Have you thought about it? Have you thought about yeah. uh, getting up there? I thought about it. I mean, these people just don't laugh, you know? It's kind of kind of rough. Some people have some funny jokes. Um, this one guy said he didn't like to um, – he didn't want to take off his clothes in front of women because he was uh, self-conscious about his body. So he decided it's the best um, to hook up with girls in his car um, so he doesn't have to take his clothes off or his shirt off at least. And then he was like, it's also awesome so they never have to see my room um, because there's so many pickle jars in my room. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't even then make he, any sense. And then he was like, "Yeah, I tried. I tried to convince them that they're rare, the pickle jars, like they're like uh, collectors' items." But um, I don't know. He he was he's just like this super nervous guy on stage too. I mean, I'm not imitating. I'm just doing his words, not his demeanor. But he was like, <laughs> he's so nervous. Like the first time I saw him, he he didn't even make it to the three minutes or four minutes. He left before he got his light. But the second time he got to the hooking up with a girl in his car, so he didn't have to take his shirt off. And then also she doesn't – I'm just happy that she never sees my room uh, because I have so many pickle jars. I thought that was funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the uh, the disconnect of uh, just like the pickle jars coming out of nowhere, like a pickle jar collector. <laughs> pickle yeah, jar I mean, collector. Uh. Yeah. And then there's one other guy he – he a chronic user of meth. Oh man! Damn. All of all, all of his material, both times, were about meth. Is he like a? Is he like a recovery? Is is he? A... No, he does it all the time. He does I mean, it all the time. Said, Damn. His first set, he said, "Oh, I'm you know I'm 11 days sober off of meth." Um, and then the next time he was just like, "I do meth all the time." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he said, "I didn't. I've done meth." for 28 years of my life i mean no wonder all my material is about meth oh, can you imagine setting up a bit where he was thinking in his head he was like i'm 11 days free from meth this set the joke was actually expected to actually hit the next time he did his stand-up bit where oh, he'd yeah. just say like I, i'm a full-blown meth user yeah. oh. uh. Yeah, and there's actually like uh there's like once you get to a certain level of um on the open mics, some like local comedy clubs, like there's one called Laughs Comedy, I think it's in Kirkland. Um they'll have you like be the host or you'll open up a show just for five minutes for like touring comedians that come in. Um if the touring comedians don't bring a an opening act. Um and one of the guys who runs the open mic, he I didn't think he was funny, but he's like the most successful guy out of that open mic. Interesting. Huh? Yeah. He said like in Louisiana, there's a, they still have the electric chair. And if I got sentenced to death by electric chair, I would choose shoelaces as my last meal. I, I don't think I get that one. He said, "Cause so you could hang yourself before." Oh, the chair. so he could hang <laughs> hang himself. Okay, that's that. That's all right. It's it's okay. I mean, it's, I, mean when you have to I get that. It, it's, when you have to explain it, it's not as funny. But then later he was talking about autoerotic asphyxiation. Um, like when you uh, jerk off and you choke yourself, so you feels good. He was making a joke about that, and I thought it would have been funny if he said that joke before he said the um, the shoelaces joke, and that way he could uh, 
work into the story like that how he was choking himself with shoelaces when he during autoerotic asphyxiation and that way when he he wouldn't have to explain the joke during the electric chair bit he would just say he wanted a bowl of shoelaces and then people would already know uh, I, thought about pitch- I thought about pitching that to him but i didn't no that 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 is a good one yeah because because the uh I don't know why I didn't get the shoelaces thing immediately. Like I, I, I it just I was, it I, I guess I, I, that's not the first thing I think of. Like when someone's like, you know, trying to hang themselves in a jail cell, but I, I guess people, yeah, I guess the shoelaces is, is one way that someone, someone could do that. Yeah. If you're good at tying knots. Yeah. You'd have to be. There used to be a, a comedy club too. Um, in a Bellevue, in Bellevue Square, they had like this little uh, this little club that opened up, um, and I remember I went one time with a with a friend, uh, a different friend that was like trying out stand up. Uh, he didn't do it all the time; it was like his first time. And I uh, went with a group, and uh, it it was interesting. There, there was like people were semi laughing. I think like a semi attendant audience. It was mostly stand up comedians in the crowd. Uh, that night, so it was kind of like I think some of them were more encouraging than others. Uh, there was one guy that got up there and he wasn't getting any laughs, and he got um, he got angry, he got really mad while he was on stage, and he started like he started swearing at people, and then he tried to make fun of like this one guy, and then they started like harassing him a little bit too, the other stand-up comedians, and it became this really awkward situation. And then he just left. He got mad and walked out. So it was, uh, he was drunk too. So that, that was probably another aspect of it. This dude was like kind of slurring his words and he started getting angry up there. But yeah, yeah. yeah. That's rough. Yeah. I think if you just went up there and you talked about everything breaking in your house, even if there's no punchlines, I think that'd just be, people would think that's funny. Yeah, I I mean I, I don't know what else to say. It's it's just true. I mean I can even I can list another thing that broke in my house too. It, like it's been broken for a while. It's my lamp. My lamp just like it's like this lamp that like it like you can adjust it and like it's supposed to stay. One of them just went Patoom! and it just is like sitting there, just kind of like dangling. And I have to like I try to push it back in so that it doesn't look bad, and it still works. It still turns on. Uh, but I I'm telling you, there's like there's many different things in my house that just my toilet broke when I first moved in. That was a long time ago, but the the lever just completely broke. I don't I don't even know what else to say. There's like there's so many things that have broken the house. The lock, the the headphones, the uh, the car battery. The car battery uh, died. The stool almost broke. The camera almost fell over. I'm telling you, it is really bad. It's even worse yeah. than I than I even mentioned last time. I I just mentioned a few things. Like there's a there's a whole list of things in my house. <laughs> there's a whole list. Yeah, dude. I mean, if you could get three minutes, if you if you do it, I would do it. Okay, okay. You know, yeah. If if you if you signed up, yeah, I'd I'd uh, I'd uh, I I'd, I'd try it out. Yeah, if you give it a try as well. Yeah. Yeah, it might have to be this summer. I don't know because it's on. My, well, I mean, we could find one another night of the week, but it's on. It's at eight p.m. You would sign up at seven thirty on Monday nights. Okay, okay, that will be difficult with class since I have classes up here. But uh, definitely, if we maybe if we find a place that's open on like the weekends, um, uh, that'll be harder to get on. But yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you're, I don't know what day your spring break is. I don't know what days you're going to Arizona, but or like during your finals week, I don't know what. I mean, you're you're on quarters. Oh, so you go later into June, right? Yeah, yeah. I I think. Let's see if I look at the at the the month here. I think I'll be off. You know, I think I'll be off towards the end of March. But aren't you going to Arizona? I am. Not full time though. Um, not for the full spring break. So I will have a few days that I'll be in the area. I need to check when uh when my flight is though. Cause they, they sent me the um 
the day that I'm supposed to leave. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I mean, if it's a Monday or a Tuesday, I, there's a couple that I that we could do. Okay, yeah. No, that, that would be fun. We should try it out. All right, cool. Well, um, it's about it's about time to start cooking dinner here. So, I agree. I agree. We can uh put a put an end to the podcast then. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, we'll uh we'll get back to you on uh on mixing uh different songs in the future. Maybe we can uh we'll, we'll figure out how to work that out. Um, I'd rather work in Pro Tools. I I think is what I realized because I. I, I didn't realize, like, if you take a break from, like, a... I, I remember the fundamentals of, like, um, FL Studios. I don't think I'll ever forget that. But there's some things where I was like, what's happening? Like, I don't even under... Like, I was like, I can't remember, like, some of the function keys, the shortcuts. Hey, you'll get back into it. Yeah, I, I think I'd rather, though, like, start working in Pro Tools again because it just, like... That's where I have all my, all my uh, different, like, gadgets that, like, you know... Uh, different um softwares that i've that i've paid for I, I feel like that's like you you kind of get boxed into certain like um certain applications you know when you've put enough time into it it's weird yeah you'll figure it out um yeah thanks for listening i hope my dentist doesn't hear about this until i'm done going to their office <laughs> but there'll be a couple years so um well luckily we'll no one no one knows about this podcast anyways so yeah, I mean, it's very unlikely, but I just hope my dentist doesn't hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't think they'd blame you. There's nothing you can do, you know? It's like, there, there's nothing that you can do about it. Like, it, it's one of those things. Yeah. Okay, signing off. All right. Peace, everybody.